Eagles Nation, what up, what up? Um, back again, hitting y'all during lunchtime. Know what I'm saying with this uh, <clears throat> this Q and A vid on um, Eagles and kind of here to talk. I talked about the secondary yesterday, so kind of talk about the offensive line today. Um, I posted on my page, you know, for people to hit me with questions and everything. They, um, I'm gonna answer the questions first and then I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna get into the O line. I might just mix it and do both of them. <laughs> Alright, um, let me see. Uh, first, my man Ant Punk 101. He said, uh, please explain if Chip is this football genius. Why he won't run a standard formation instead of instead everything has to be in the shotgun. Reason why I'm asking you, line up two extra tight ends, start a run game, and use this in play action game. Bradford has no play action at all. <laughs> Bro, your guess good as mine on that one, man. I always look at the formation and I wonder, but the only thing I can think of as far as like Chip lining up in the shotgun, I don't know, I guess it gives um Instead of quarterback drop back. See, like I said before, as much as Chip tries to deny that his offense need is in need of a mobile quarterback with legs, I guess that's part of the theory of why they line up in the shotgun. Because in the eye formation, yeah, I understand, you know, you hike the ball and you hand it off, but you got a lead blocker behind the QB. But um, in the shotgun, I guess that adds more... To the theory of him needing a mobile quarterback because if you're about three, four, five yards behind, you know, your center and he hikes you the ball, it gives you time to look and see what it gives you a little bit more time to react. If you're a mobile quarterback with legs, it gives you more time to react to the pass rush and how everything is um evolving in front of your face, how everything is going in front of your face, it gives you a little bit more time to react. And it also gives you, you know, time to read and hand the ball off so the running back can react. But it is a pain in the ass, to tell you the truth, because, you know, when you got third and short and everything, you got the running back five yards behind the line of scrimmage, so now it turns into a third and six. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's pretty much my only guess on it, man. Um, that's just the way he lines up his QB and his running back. To give them more time to react. But um, that's all I can think of as far as that one go. Alright, um, Gabeski. Said, do you really think it, it is completely the O-line not giving enough time to Bradford? I was watching some of his reads and a lot of them I bet he could take back. He's got to be able to make those reads fast and make faster decisions. Also, we know Murray can run. But he has to get those lanes to be effective. I'm seeing last year's McCoy all over again. And you know what? I actually was just having an argument um on Facebook with a guy about this whole scenario. Last year, you know, you had three you had three backups on the um offensive line. This year, you got two backups, but they're starters. You know what I'm saying? So, like I always tell people, man, I'm like. If you got a pocket passer, like like last year, Foles is our pocket passer. He wasn't the mobile guy that can run. And this year, you got the pocket passer in Sam Bradford. So, I mean, with a pocket passer, your O-line, for him to pick apart defenses, your O-line has to be top-notch unless you're Peyton Manning or Brady, whereas, you know, those receivers know where they're supposed to be. By the time the ball gets there, as opposed to, you know, calling, calling the play and running reads, trying to find that open man. If you look at how Peyton Manning plays, even if he has a bad offensive line, sometimes it affects him. But it's more so, you know, you know what spot you got to be in. You know where the ball is going to be. You got to get your ass to that spot. You know what I'm saying? But it's, quarter, it's very rare that a quarterback gets respected like that to the point where, you know, uh, the QB knows who's getting the ball already. He reads the D. He got his. He has his guy, and he has that ball on the spot that guy's supposed to be. And if he's not there, you know the whole damn media know. Oh, that guy wasn't must not have been on the right spot. You know what I'm saying? So, um, 
But last year, you know, the old line that we had last year, the backups, I think having backups was overblown when it when it when it involved Nick Foles um mediocre or bad play because I mean pressure is pressure, hits is hits, but above all for them seven games that the offensive line was uh full of backups, Foles only got sacked four times. So it was more so him just making bad decisions because a lot of the interceptions he threw was also him throwing off his back foot in the pocket with rarely any pressure in his face. And, of course, you've seen when the starters came back, Mark Sanchez was the quarterback. I think they allowed 23 sacks on him. But, um, yeah, I've seen Bradford, man. Like, his, his accuracy is off. I think he's a little bit more timid now because, as I said, when the preseason, in the preseason, you don't see a full-fledged defensive pass rush and everything they're going to throw at you during the season. They try to keep that, you know, under wraps and just get out of the preseason injury-free and everything. So when the season starts, it's not a starting pass rushing defensive end or starting pass rushing outside linebacker coming at you for one series and then he sits down. They're coming at you all game, left and right. So I think what Bradford saw in the preseason with these guys was lackluster play just to avoid injury. And now what I think he's seeing now is full-fledged pass rushes in your face coming at you. And they're exposing the holes in our offensive line and everything. So I think it's forcing him into making bad throws. But I also think his timing is off with his receivers too because young receivers, man, like I said, they got to find a niche. They got to find their way in the NFL. So, you know, I guess these young guys are having trouble like with separation, with route, with um being at a certain place at a certain time, route running. It takes a little while, you know, for younger guys to adapt to the NFL. But um, it also has a lot to do with the O-line because, like I said, when you're holding back what your defensive skill set is in the preseason, you know, you show an offensive line something totally different during the season. It's like, oh, yeah, in the preseason I ran a 5-5 at the quarterback. I wasn't trying to get hurt. But in the season, what he don't know is I run a 4-4. So that whole 1.1 seconds is a lot different. And I think Bradford's a little shaky because of his knee. But at the same time, like you have two new guys on the offensive line, so they're part to blame too. And um, I'm going to get into that later. But I think, I think it's a 50-50 thing, man. I think um, Bradford is timid, and you know he's making bad decisions. But I also think the O-line – with these two new starters, you know, plays a major part in that. Like I said, I'll get into that later. Now, um, and then Gabeski87 actually said, I felt like our defense did a great job allowing one touchdown while being on the field for 40 minutes. Like I talked about in my secondary video last time, man, 40 minutes to wear down any defense. So I agree with you there, buddy. Um, I didn't really get too many questions for um this Q and A, so I guess I just gotta throw my analysis on um the offensive line. But I did get a couple questions on Facebook. Um, hang on one second, I gotta find the post. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Come on, come on, come on. My man Ryan Corbin asked me a question, but it's acting like it don't want to load. Come on now. I didn't know it was this far down in my notifications. Sorry for the delay. Hmm. Okay, well, while that loses, I think I remember what was the question. Um, he asked me, was it more scheme or uh, 
did it have more to do with scheme or um lack of talent for the most part I guess um Okay, here we go. Um, it takes forever to load this phone. I got bad reception in my house. Come on, man. Jesus. Okay, here we go. Yeah, he said, uh, is it a lack of talent or execution when it comes to our offensive line? My man Ryan Corbin asked me that on Facebook. And um, lack of talent, I won't say, because, of course, you know, we got Pro Bowl. We got three Pro Bowl caliber offensive linemen. But um, it basically comes down to the execution, but it also... As I said in my video before, you have two guys that are probably backups at best, starting. And that's one thing that Arizona arrogance of Chip Kelly, meaning like you can get rid of the best left guard in the game and think you just can plug anybody in his spot and it's going to work. But what a lot of people didn't understand was, and I said this a long time ago, I said, do you really think Sam Bradford is the guy? That Chip Kelly wants. A guy with two left ACL tears in a row. Or two right ACL tears. I'm, I, I forgot which leg it was. I think it was his right ACL. Two years in a row. Behind a shaky offensive line that really all they have is an off season of chemistry. They don't have live game action chemistry or none of that. And you got two new guys on the offensive line. That's not smart game plan and that's arrogance. But as far as execution, it has a lot of it has a lot to do with that. Because what people don't understand is, it was a year where Jason Peters went down with the Achilles injury, and Evan Mathis, the left side wasn't the same. You know what I mean? I think that's the year we went four and twelve. The left side of the offensive line wasn't the same without Peters. So now you're seeing that the left side of the offensive line ain't the same without Evan Mathis. But the difference is. A left tackle gets paid a lot of money to keep the pass rusher from coming off the edge. What Jason Peters was years ago when he was younger, he was a guy that can hold down that left side by picking up the slack for the left guard. Now, when we got Evan Mathis, you had two guys, you know, that had to gel with each other, but they was two. Evan Mathis became a Pro Bowl left guard next to Peters. Peters was already a Pro Bowl left tackle. So what you have there is a one-two punch. With the perfect, with the perfect connection, the perfect chemistry, and if you notice, um, Shady McCoy, he did most of his damage running to the left side of the offensive line behind Peters and Mathis. What you have now is a Peters who is a 33-year-old, and he's not his athleticism is dwindling because he's an older guy now, so he doesn't have that ability to carry the left guard as much as he did years ago. You know what I'm saying? Not to say he carried Evan Mathis, they established the connection. And you know, a chemistry, like I just said. But it was a time where the left guard was always like, you know, it was a time where Peters did have to carry that hold down that left side. So, I mean, now the right side of our offensive line always been the weakest side. Not, not to say Lane Johnson. He's excluded from this. But Lane Johnson is a young guy who's not going to carry a seasoned veteran. But, you know, Lane Johnson is Lane Johnson. You know what I'm saying? But... Even last year, at the end of the year, Andrew Gardner, he was good in pass protection, covering for Harriman's, but he wasn't good in the run game when it would it involve running the uh, running back to the right side, you know. And Lane Johnson, he's still a young guy in the making, you know. I think he's a future Pro Bowler, but I think it comes down more to execution because, um. I mean, these guys haven't had enough time in live action games. And I don't even know. I mean, I'm sure after a few more games, maybe they'll get better. But in the whole process, you're losing games. And the losses is adding up. You know what I mean? 
and it's not a it's not a guaranteed fact that they're going to get it together and be a top notch offensive line. You know what I mean? I think Allen Barber. What I think should have happened was he should have gave Evan Mathis a chance to come to mandatory minicamp. But you know Chip Kelly, he doesn't like being shown up. He doesn't like being disputed. So you know he cut him. Now what I would have did was kept Evan Mathis on the left side with Peters. That way you still have that connection even though they got older. But you still have that continuity and that chemistry. That would have been cool. I would have put Alan Barber at right guard next to Lane Johnson. Because I'd rather have Barber on the line than Andrew Gardner. Not to say it's a drastic difference between either one of them. But I would have went with Alan Barber being as though he was the guy you wanted to put at right tackle. When Lane Johnson had the four game suspension. But unfortunately he got hurt. So... I think he was been better suited for right guard. And then you got to understand something about Kels. Like, everybody's saying how bad Kels is playing, but getting into our offensive line and how everything is, our offensive line, the way we play, and these two new guys is victim to that. They don't understand, you know, the concept of opening holes for the running back and then Kels being the guy getting to that second level, blocking downfield because he's so athletic. So when you're dealing with two new guys, not one, but two new guys, Evan Mathis is not going to, I mean, um, Alan Barber is not going to open up holes like Mathis did so Kels can hit the second level running hard, blocking downfield. You know what I'm saying? It's not the same. Nor is Alan Barber going to open up holes so Kels can hit the second level and get downfield on the right side. You know what I'm saying? So I think this offensive line thing, was a mistake, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's real simple. It's real simplified. Like it's real simple. Our offensive line and our scheme. Like just open the holes and let the athletic, let the athletic ones, the faster ones, get downfield blocking. And as simple as that. But when you're dealing with two new guys, that's not really. They play two live action games together with Kels Peters and Lane Johnson. So. It's just like last year. Like I said, I think the I think the um, subs that played last year, I think they affected Shady McCoy's run game more than they affected Nick Foles' passing game. Because these guys this year, they're bum-rushing Bradford. So he has to rush throws and things like that. And he's off target. Last year, they were rushing Foles, but Foles still managed to... And I'm not going to lie. The games last year was easier. You know, Atlanta's not a team to sneeze at or take lightly. And we thought we could just beat Dallas with all of the uh, losses they suffered and everything, but it didn't work like that. But, yeah, that's as, as simple as that, man. I think um, Chip Kelly needs to – well, he can't get Mathis back now because he's playing in Denver. And one of my buddies said Mathis is not doing too hot in Denver either. Well, that's because he's not in a system. He's, he, he's a veteran. He's an older guy. Now he's older, trying to adapt to a new offensive line. Jason Peters is not next to him, so now you, being an offensive lineman, man, you have to, you know, you have to be together long enough to establish, you know, chemistry, to establish reads, to know where you're supposed to be. And when you go to a new team, being an old head, like you do what you know, but you still got to get used to the system there. You know what I'm saying? So Evan Math is doing what he does, what he knows. But it's not Jason Peters next to him on his left. It's not Jason Kels next to him on his right. So, like I said, I think offensive lineman, offensive line is the most important aspect of the team. Like, it starts with those five guys up front. So, I mean, it is what it is, man. Like, now you're starting to see, and this is what pisses me off, pissed me off about Chip Kelly. I'm not one of them fans that got mad that you released everybody. I'm just mad that you think you can plug anybody into any spot and it's just going to work right. And that's not always the case. Sometimes you got to swallow your pride and say, I need this guy on my team for my game plan to succeed as it's been doing for the last few years. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's pretty much my... Um, That's pretty much how I feel about that, man. It's just basically two new guys in the system that they're not familiar with. It's going to take time to get familiar with. But at the same time, man, like, 
you could have kept Evan Mathis here. And if it's really about, you know, the run game, because DeMarco Murray, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's looking more and more like that theory of Dallas fans saying it was our offensive line more than it was Murray. It's starting to look a little bit more true now because um, as you can see, he's not doing anything behind our offensive line. They're not getting a push. They're not opening holes. They're just getting ran through. A lot of people call them Swiss cheese. And they're saying it looks like Peters is not playing good. Kelsey not playing good. Like, yes, it's, it, it, that's how it's going to be because it's two new guys in the middle. Like, right guard, left guard is an important positions in the run game because you don't always do uh, sweeps and everything. So your right guard, I mean your right tackle, your left tackle, they're more so just there to keep the pass rushes off of you and the pass protection, and they're more so there, you know, to. Hold down the outside if a run goes to the outside, but I mean, you got a my man, um, Showtime eighty four. He asked me, uh, who are the free agent? He asked me who are the free agent offensive linemen. Um, Showtime eight oh four. Check out his uh internet radio show too um what guards are available in free agency now right now shoot a lot of these guys sign it's not too many I mean Jake long is still out there I think I don't know if he I don't know if he signed with uh Atlanta yet or not Um, Anthony Collins. Yeah, a lot of these guys, Chris Harrison, um, Sam Baker, Ryan Harris, Don Barkley, Marshall. No, he said, um, oh, Don Barkley was tendered by the Packers. Um, that's pretty much it, man. It's not, it's not really too many guys out there, man. But, uh. Is what it is, man. That's my take on the offensive line, man. Like, I mean, basically, either it's going to take a little while to get that chemistry down and live game action or something. But, like I said, I think Evan Mathis, letting him go was a mistake. So, you know, I mean, is what it is, man. I mean, that was a quick Q&A, quick vid, you know what I'm saying? But, that's my take on that, man. Like, we got to get... We got to gel, and it might cost us a lot of games. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't even know if it's going to happen, but my main point of emphasis is, man, it's just two backup guys you're trying to convert into starters, and sometimes it doesn't work like that. But, I mean, we just got to wait and see, man. So uh, that's my take on that. Let me know what y'all think. Um, Peace, man. I'll get at y'all later.